Hi everyone and welcome to this episode. Today we are dealing with equilibrium constants that are expressed in terms of pressures as opposed to concentrations and we call these KP values and we use these values when the components of our equilibrium are in the gas phase and we have pressure data as opposed to moles per liter or concentration data. They're very similar and we're going to learn how to write them. We're going to practice calculating them and we'll actually learn how to go from a KC value to a KP value or vice versa. So let's get into it. Uh, first of all, when the components of an equilibrium are in the gas phase, the equilibrium constant can be expressed in terms of pressure since pressure and concentration are proportional under the same conditions. We've learned that uh, the higher the concentration, the higher the pressure that the gas will exert. And the equilibrium constant expression looks a bit different by convention uh, for this reaction. Notice that the K is given a P value and instead of square brackets, which mean moles per liter or concentration, we're just using regular parentheses with a pressure, a big P, and then the pressure of what? What component are we measuring at that moment? All right, and this KP value is now the ratio of the pressures of the products over the pressures of the reactants. <clears throat> okay, so that's how your equilibrium constant expression should look. And if you're taking AP chemistry or something like that, there's usually a sample one on your equation sheet. So let's get into it. We're going to have three pause the video moments today. So have your pencils handy and I'll do this one first. Write the equilibrium constant expression KP for this reaction. So I have, um, so KP, and then I have SO3 as my product. So I'm going to put a large capital P with a little subscript SO3 so that anybody reading my works know, knows that I know that that's the one. And again, a squared because of the two in the coefficient. So keep that consistent with the KC expressions. All right, and then we'll do the pressure of SO2 on the bottom, also squared, and the pressure of O2. This is by convention how we write the equilibrium constant expression KP. Okay, so first pause the video a moment. You go ahead and try um, this next one. Really popular reaction. This is the reaction of producing ammonia, for example, in the Haber process. And um, take a moment and see if you can write the equilibrium constant expression for this reaction. All right. If you came up with an equilibrium constant expression that looked like this, then we're on the same page and, um, and we've done it right. So good job on that. So once we have our equilibrium constant expression written correctly by convention, we can start doing things like calculating equilibrium constants. So I'm using the same reactions uh, for all three steps today, so we don't have to write new ones. Um, so just keep that first one handy that you did. Calculate the equilibrium com calculate the, sorry about that the equilibrium constant Kp for this reaction when now we have pressure data. Okay. And so I've got my expression and now I just need to, just like the KC value, KP values, we're going to plug in what we know and what we don't know. So 3.18, sorry about that. We're gonna square that. And we'll plug in for the SO2, the 1.34, and we're gonna square that. And the pressure of the oxygen, which is 0.56. Atmospheres. I'm, I'm just excluding units here because the final answer is not going to have a unit anyway. But if I calculate this with my calculator, I end up with 10.1 as my Kp value. All right, there's, there it is. So plug in your pressures just like before, and you can get your Kp values. So your turn. Go back to the ammonia reaction, which you wrote the Kp value for. And... Here's some pressure data at 50 degrees Celsius. Take a moment and see if you can pause the video and calculate Kp for this reaction. And congratulations if you were able to get a value of 0 0.096 for this reaction. I plugged all the data in and did the math and that's what I got. Okay, great. Now, we're going to do one more step and I have a formula to tell you about. This one says, okay, all right, I've got my KP expression. I've calculated KP, which is 10.1. And what if I wanted to know what the KC value is for this reaction? Like 
we've got gases and they have pressures, but they also have volumes uh, in liters and the number of moles is in there. So we could conceivably get a con you know, concentration in moles per liter. But what would that be? Would my KP value be the same as KC or would it be different? Well, the answer is it depends. Okay. And your textbook probably has a derivation of this formula somewhere in it. Um, you can Google it online. I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing that, but let's take a look. There is a formula that relates KP to KC for a gaseous equilibrium. They may have the same value, but they may have different values depending on the number of moles of molecules on each side of the reaction. So um, we have this formula, KP, whatever that value is, is equal to KC times RT. So in PV equals NRT, if we take out the V and the N and make a concentration out of it, we're still left with an RT unit uh, value somewhere. And that carries throughout the calculation. And then we take R times T, the ideal gas constant times the temperature, times a delta N. And delta N is the number of moles of product minus the number of moles of reactants. So the change in the number of moles of gaseous uh, reactants to products. We'll do an example. Uh, R is the ideal gas constant, T is the temperature in Kelvins. Now note, if the number of moles of product and reactant are equal, for example, if two moles of reactants make two moles of gaseous product, then the delta N is going to be zero. This will be all just simplified to a one. Anything raised to the zero is one. And you'll just have Kp equal to Kc. But if the number of moles changes, then you have to do a quick little calculation. So let's get back to it. And here's my Kp value again. So if I want to find Kc, all right, I'm going to use this formula. Kp equals Kc times Rt to the delta N. All right. Kp is 10.1. And I don't know what Kc is, so I'm going to have to leave that uh, as my variable. Now, by convention, the ideal gas constant should be 0 0.0821 liters, atmospheres, moles, kelvins, because our uh, units are in atmospheres. And the temperature here, I have a temperature here of 125 degrees Celsius, but that has to be in Kelvin. So make sure you're putting it 398 kelvins. And then we're going to take that quantity raised to the delta N. Now, what is the delta N for this reaction? There's two moles of product and then two plus one moles of reactants. So my delta N is going to be two minus three or a negative one. I'm going to take all of this raised to the negative one. And then I'm going to move it over to the other side. And when I do that, I get a KC value of 330. Okay, so a big difference between the KP value and the KC value, but that's just because the number of moles changed. Okay, so now it's your turn one more time. If you go back to your example and your KP value of 0 0.096, take a moment and see if you can calculate KC using the same formula that I just did. All right, and if you did, Go check it out. Our KP was 0.096, so we plugged that in for there. KC again was left blank, and you're doing the same thing that I did. Uh, ideal gas constant, this time the temperature is 323. Quantity, we're going to raise it to the negative 2, because 2 moles of product came from 4 moles of reactants, so 2 minus 4. And I got a KC value of 67.5. So there you have it, a quick little tutorial about how to work with KP values, calculate KP values, and convert KP into KC and vice versa. Um, a quick note about this formula. I teach AP Chem. This formula used to be on the AP Chem uh, equation sheet, but since then they've taken this off. Um, it's useful to know uh, for our daily travels in chemistry class. Um, I'm not sure if you'll be asked this on a test, but if you do, you're now you're prepared and you're ready to go. So uh, thank you for watching this episode. Uh, if you have any questions you'd like to ask me or problems you'd like me to solve, you can send them to me in the comments or send them to me. In the meantime, happy solving and have a great day.